turn on the hoverboard, what's going to happen? It's going to hit. So it's going to hit. Because our students participate in meaningful projects, there we go. they are able to think outside of the box. They learn empathy and realize that their dreams may become a reality. Yay! Are you excited? Part of the fabric of Eminence culture is contributing to the larger society. So we really try to encourage kids to plug into what is a problem or an issue or a gap that needs to be filled, and then how can you contribute to that? So, you know, Wheels for Tate really starts with this idea of there's a kid in our building who has a need, and we feel like we could take a shot at solving that. The fifth grade classroom is at the other end of our building. Tay can't walk that really, really long distance. So my special ed director said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could design a hoverboard chair? We had about 27 kids sign up. So we'll talk about our parts and pieces and what we need to do today to get it started. And I said, well, how are you gonna do that? You know, a wheelchair, a mobile wheelchair might be $15,000. They started scouring the internet and they came back and they said, we're gonna do it for 400 bucks. We had this picture and a video it was based on. The kids came up with the idea to sell advertisements to go on the back of the hoverboard wheelchair. So when you see any of those businesses, make sure that you give them a big thank you. Tate, can you tell us how does this make you feel? Happy. After we had the funding in place, the next step was to actually design the vehicle. We had to take Tate's measurements to figure out the dimensions for the frame. We wanted to make sure that we could make it safe. Why did we choose to go with aluminum? Here's it was him. light and very strong. Aluminum. This morning, the students worked on putting the vehicle together. So they had to file the aluminum, create the frame, attach all the pieces. It's really cool. Well, I've never done this before. It's really helping me with the math. We just measured the axles to make sure that it was centered and the bolts are on tight. We had to put the wheels on the axle and the chair on top of it. We also had to think about the hoverboard and its placement. Uh, guys, I see a problem with that hoverboard. I'm going to wait and see if you guys can problem solve and figure it out yourself. It's backwards. It's backwards. Okay. Uh, it is backwards. And I tightened that thing really hard. We ran into a lot of problems, but once they figure it out on their own, they have so much more pride in their work. Okay, the plastic zip ties are secure. The chair should be secure. Yep. It's secure. So moving forward, we need to make sure it works, right? So we're going to test drive it. Let's explain to Tate, refresher on what he needs to do. He needs to put equal weight on both feet and lean forward. There you go. Tate was so excited to hop onto the hoverboard wheelchair. He was able to sit down and he's able to get his feet aligned. Here we go! Yeah. Good job, Tate. So we're trying to get handlebars so Tate can steer. The handlebars are going to be so helpful for you. Yeah. yeah. You did good. Good job, yeah. Tate. Yeah. This project taught them more than I ever could in a 30 minute lecture. It allows the hands-on experience. Also, building empathy was a really key piece. Once you've made a difference for another human being, it's really hard to stop that. When I see a kid who I built a mobility device for and his eyes light up and I've made his day, like, that gets in you and you want to do more of that. It makes me feel good inside because I'm doing something good and no one gets left out 